I'm Ian Somerville and in this video I'm going to be talking about four activities which are an inherent part of all software engineering processes. These are the activities of specification, software design and implementation, software validation and software evolution. Software specification is about setting out what the system should do, what should be implemented and the expected behaviour of the software. Design and implementation is about organising the software and the data structures and implementing the system, programming it in some programming language. Software validation involves testing the system, testing it for bugs to see if mistakes have been made in the development process and to check if it meets the user's requirements. And software evolution, this happens after the software has been deployed, where it's changed in response to changing user requirements or to fix bugs that weren't discovered before the software was, was delivered to the customer. These four fundamental activities are part of all software processes, be they plan-based or agile processes, but they're organised differently in different processes. For example, in the waterfall model, these activities are organised in sequence and they make up the phases or stages of the waterfall model. In an agile process, they are interleaved. We do a bit of specification, a bit of implementation, a bit of testing and so on. The first activity, specification, is sometimes called requirements engineering. And the requirements engineering process has a number of sub-processes or activities within it. These are requirement solicitation and analysis, where an engineer is working with users and customers to discover what they want from the system and to check that what they want is consistent across the organisation. Requirement specification is actually taking that analysis and setting it out to defining it on, as a document of some kind so that it can be used by the development team as a basis for the design of the system. And requirements validation is checking the validity of the requirements. Do the requirements conflict with each other? That is, do they ask for different things? Are they sensible? Are they achievable? Are they implementable? Software design and implementation starts with actually working out an architecture for the system, an overall structure for the system and major components of the system. And then depending on the development process, maybe defining that design in more detail at different stages. Implementation is the familiar programming process where you're writing programs to build the system. What we find now is that design and implementation are typically interleaved activities. We don't usually set out a software design and implement that design, although sometimes that's still part of the development process. This general model of the design process show that there's a set of design inputs, information that's required to complete the design, a set of design activities such as architectural design, Component design, designing the individual parts of the system. Database design, designing the structure of the data to be processed. And interface design, designing the APIs, the external interfaces of the system. And then the design process has a set of design outputs. These outputs might be an architectural specification, a component specification, that is, a design specification, not a, a specification in terms of requirements, a database design, and an interface design. Implementation can be done by developing a program, and in that development, we may reuse components as part of the system, or sometimes it's done by configuring an application system, by writing configuration instructions, which tailors that generic application system to a specific set of customer requirements. 
Programming is an individual activity. There isn't really a process for programming. People program in different ways. They have their, developed their own styles. Sometimes a company has some standards for setting out programs, but the actual programming, the intellectual process of programming differs from one individual to another. And then we have the process of debugging, which is part of the programming process where tests are run, problems discovered and fixed in the program. And it's an inherent part of many agile methods that testing and programming are very closely linked. So that sometimes we do test first development, but that will be the subject of a later video. Validation or verification and validation as it's sometimes called has two objectives. One is to show that a software meets its requirements. The other is to show that the software is actually useful to the user. And these are not necessarily the same thing because the requirements may not properly capture what the user really needs. System testing is a process of executing the system using data that's derived from the specification. It's not real user data, it's data that is made up by the developers or the testing team, which seems to be consistent with the user specification. And as well as testing in the verification and validation process, there may be other checking and review processes, sometimes supported by automated tools. Again, these will be the subject of a later video. The testing process varies quite widely from one organisation to another, but within the testing process, there are always really three activities. One is component testing, where individual parts of the system are tested, often by the developer of the programme, sometimes by a separate test team, sometimes using techniques such as test first development and automated tests. Then there's system testing, which takes place at a number of levels. That's used to test the APIs, which are developed to the system. It's used to check if the system meets the customer's requirements and it's used to check the non-functional behaviour of the system, that is, its performance, its reliability, and so on. And then there's acceptance testing. Acceptance testing is the, the testing process in which a customer or a, a surrogate for a customer of a software process are involved, where the, the customer decides if the software actually is what they want. In a plan-driven process, we sometimes see this model of testing, which is called the V model. To make it fit on a slide, I've actually turned it on its side. But if you imagine this as a, a, in a vertical alignment, you can see the V where each of the stages in the development process have got a corresponding testing activity. Finally, software evolution. Software is inherently flexible and it's much easier to change than hardware systems. So it's inevitable once software goes into use that it's changed to meet the changing requirements of its customer and users. Typically, there's a line drawn between software development and evolution where a software system is developed and then handed over to a different team for maintenance and evolution, sometimes in a different company. But in practice, now the line between these activities is actually blurring as we reuse more and more software. The system evolution process has to look at the systems to say, are these the right system to evolve to provide some new functionality? Would it be better to build new systems rather than change the existing systems? So there's an assessment process which comes early in the evolution stage. If the assessment process concludes that a system can be evolved, then there's the process of making changes to the system and testing the new system. Unfortunately, it's sometimes the case that making these changes introduces new bugs into the system or causes existing bugs that have been hidden to come to light. So the system is modified, a new system is delivered, put into use, and then the cycle starts again. As requirements change, new system changes are proposed. 
So these are the fundamental activities in software engineering. Specification, design and implementation, validation and evolution. And the first part of my book looks at these basic activities and discusses each of them in more detail.